Now that you've actually got your estimate set up in QuickBooks, if the customer calls and says, go ahead and start the work, you're going to want to get paid for some of the work you've done, and you're going to be able to create invoices directly from those estimates that you've already created. I want to show you how to go ahead and create an invoice directly from estimates. There are two parts to this video, so make sure you watch both parts so that you understand the full concept of how this works. Once you're ready to create that invoice, go ahead and follow the flowchart and click on Create Invoices. You'll notice that the invoice screen looks almost identical to the estimate screen with a few exceptions. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to the right and go ahead and hide the history so that I have more room to work on. And then I'm going to pull in my customer and my job. Remember this is the sunroom that we're working on for Tom Allen. Now this window here is going to appear and this is the available estimates window. What it's doing is listing all of the estimates for Tom Allen Sunroom that we've not invoiced everything from. Even if there's a penny left it's going to show up on this list. I'm going to choose the one I'd like to pull in and click OK. Now the next thing it's going to ask me is do you want to pull in an invoice for the entire estimate, 100% of it, Maybe you want to create an invoice for a percentage of the entire estimate, or you can pull in selected items or different percentages. Let me just show you the bottom one, and then I'm going to go back and make it 30%. I'll just choose the bottom one and click OK. These are the items that are on the estimate, and you have the ability to say, I want to pull in two of these and one of these or you might pull in a certain percentage of each one. There's just all kinds of ways you can pull in whatever it is you want to pull from that estimate onto this invoice. I'm going to cancel that though. And just to show you this, because it still has Tom Allen Sunroom here and I canceled, I need to go to the bottom and hit clear. Then I can pull it in again. I'm going to choose Tom Allen Sunroom. Choose the estimate I'd like to pull from. And then I'm going to pick the middle one and just put in 30. Now it knows 30%. You can type it or not here. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to click OK. And now you'll see it's pulled in 30% of my estimate. When you look over at the quantity, you'll see it pulled three of the framing and it pulled 0.6 of the wood door. If you wanted to add something to this, maybe a shipping charge or a delivery charge, let's see if they have one in the list that we can use. If I go down the list and look at this, I believe that they do have one close to the bottom here, and they actually have a delivery charge. And I want to charge them just $25. I'll just say quantity of one, and the rate is $25. You can add as many line items as you want to this. This does not affect the estimate in any way. Now, a couple things I just want you to notice. First of all, a lot of this you'll be very familiar with from working with the estimates. We talked a little bit about the main tab, how you have a find feature here. If I'm looking for a particular invoice and I can't find it, I can use the arrows to search next or previous. And I can also use the find feature to go through and put in some criteria that I might know in order to help me find that particular invoice. New is the same thing as Save and New down here at the bottom. I've also got my Save option where I can save this as a PDF if I want or just save this so that I don't lose my work. I can delete this invoice, create a copy, I can also memorize it. We also talked a little bit about Marcus Pending. Remember that if I want to keep this invoice in here, but maybe I'm not quite ready for it to show up in my reports for whatever reason, I can mark it as Pending and come back later and then take that option off. I can print this. Let me go ahead and show you a preview of what this is going to look like. And you can see right now that it's very basic. You can see that I have my company name and address. I've got the word invoice at the top. There's a place for the bill to and the ship to. Obviously, if we're not shipping anything, we can go take this out. We'll talk about customizing this in a later module. And then you can see it has all the information at the bottom, the sales tax, if there were any payments already made, and a balance due at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and close that. 
I can also choose to print this later or email this later. We talked earlier about email later means that if you have several different ones you've created, you can send them all as a batch. Well, you can do the same thing with printing. If you actually create several invoices and you want to print them all at the same time, you can choose the print later option right up here. You can attach a file to this. Maybe you have something from your vendor that you want to attach, should be able to do that. And I want to talk real quick about add time slash cost and what this means. If you have any expenses that you had incurred related to this particular customer and you want to at some point pull those all in and invoice the customer, you can do that. Now we don't have any in here currently, but let me just pull up this screen so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to be able to keep track of any time I incurred any expenses, any mileage, or any items. If I wanted to pull in anything that was under any of these tabs, I just check it off and click OK, and it will actually pull it into this window. And that way, I don't have to write this in my little book and remember it and come type it in. It's a real big pain to do that. So this is a great little feature if you have expenses that you need to turn around and invoice your customer for to get reimbursed. You can also apply any credits. If you'd already created a credit memo towards this invoice, this is a place where you can go to apply those credits. And let me just mention the progress. We don't really have too much of a progress to look at it right now, but if we had actually already invoiced several of these from that estimate, if we had actually received a payment, maybe made a deposit, then we can actually kind of track that. You could receive payment right from here. Chances are at this point though you don't have a payment and even if you do you might not be on this screen when you're ready to actually receive payment so you can do that from the home screen as well. You can also create a batch. If there are multiple customers that are going to all chip in and pay this one invoice then you can actually choose the create a batch option and it will send an invoice to multiple customers and then they can each pay their part. You can also create a refund or a credit at this point for this particular invoice. Let's go up and look at some of the options under the formatting tab. One of the things we're able to do is we're able to come over to the templates that you see right here and we're able to customize these or create a new one. And this is where we would go to work on some of those options. Here's your spell check. Here's where you can insert a line, delete a line, or copy a line, and then here's some more of the customized options for your template. Now, under the send slash ship, there's a couple of new things here. If you have to ship physical items to your customer or to a job site or somewhere, then that means that you're going to have to go and schedule a pickup with FedEx, UPS, or the United States Postal Service. Typically, you would get out of QuickBooks and go to the internet and pull up your account with any of these, but you don't have to do that. You can do it right from here. Notice I can go ahead and schedule my FedEx pickup. I can go ahead for the UPS and schedule the UPS pickup or for the Postal Service as well. It's going to basically take you to the FedEx website. You sign in and then you'll be able to take care of all of these options. That's a pretty cool feature you can do from within QuickBooks. We do have some more mail merge options right over here. And then the last one, these are some reports that have to do with this particular invoice. You'll notice there's a quick report you can run. You can look at a transaction history or a journal. The transaction history is actually going to list all the transactions. So you can see any payments have been made towards this. You can see if it's linked to anything. And then when you look at the transaction journal here, it's going to show basically the same information just in a timeline fashion. You can view any open invoices, look at your sales by customer detail, and also average days to pay summary. That's going to give you a quick overview of how the invoicing works right here. What I want to do is go ahead and stop the video here. We're going to go to part two and we're going to continue pulling everything off of that estimate into some invoicing and then we can look at some reports having to do with that a little bit later. We just created an invoice from our estimate and what we need to do now is go ahead and 
finish invoicing everything from that estimate and then look at a couple of reports that have to do with invoicing. Let's go ahead and flip back over to QuickBooks and we'll continue talking about invoicing from estimates. This is part two. Now that we've completed the first invoice, let's go ahead and hit save and new at the bottom. And I want to go ahead and invoice the customer for the remaining amounts that were left on the estimate. The process would be that the customer has okayed the job, everything's good, we've completed it. Let's go ahead and pull in Tom Allen's sunroom again. It's going to pull up the available estimates. We're going to choose the estimate that we're going to pull from. We're going to click OK. And this time you'll notice in the progress invoice window that the first one's a little bit different. Notice it says create an invoice for the remaining amounts of the estimate. We can also invoice for another 30% if we wanted to or selected items. We're going to go ahead and invoice for the remaining amounts and click OK. You'll notice now it brought in everything that was left on that estimate that we had not yet pulled into an invoice. I'm going to go ahead and add a delivery charge to this as well. We're going to say that it's a quantity of one at $25. And that's all I want to add to that particular invoice. You're familiar with everything up here, so I'm not going to go through all that again. I'm just going to hit save and close at the bottom. And now we have invoiced everything. If we happen to create another invoice and pull in the same customer and job, it will not pull up that available estimate window again because there's nothing left to pull in. This window happened to be underneath, so this is our customer center. And I wanted to show you that if you're clicked on your customer, and in this case we're on the sunroom, here's the estimate we created, and there are both invoices we created. If I wanted to open any of these up, I could just double click on them and go right to that particular transaction. There are a couple of reports that I want you to be familiar with that have to do with customers. If you go to the menu and click on reports, we're going to be looking at all these different reports in a later module. But right now, I want you to look at the customers and receivables category. And then in there, we're going to pull up the open invoices. Open means these have not yet been paid. This is the report you would want to pull on Fridays when you're looking to make some collection calls. When you're looking down this list, a couple things. Here's Tom Allen's sunroom. You'll see the two invoices that we just created. But a couple things just to be aware of when you're looking at the open invoice report. Let's say that you see something like an invoice for $100 and then below it it said payment of $100 and the balance is zero. That would actually be wrong or I should say it shouldn't show up on this report. That just means that there is some payment that's not attached to that invoice. If they were, then they wouldn't show up on this report. You also might see just a payment by itself occasionally. That could be legitimate, maybe a customer paid you ahead of time, but just make sure that there shouldn't be an invoice in there to attach that payment to. There's one other report I want you to look at. When I go back to reports, back to customers and receivables, there is a customer balance detail report. And this is the one that shows the customer's entire history. Here is our Tom Allen sunroom again, but I want you to look at Christy Abercrombie. She has three different jobs, and notice they're separated, but they show up under her name. You can see there's a couple of invoices, a payment, down here there's a check, there's a credit memo. So that's the entire history of the customer. Now let's go ahead and go back to home for a moment. And now we've completed the estimates, and we've created two invoices, and now we're going to sit back and wait to get paid. And that's the fun part when we start getting money coming in the door. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and wrap up this particular video on invoicing from estimates. This was part two. We need to go ahead now and talk about invoicing customers for products and services. And then we'll talk about receiving payments from customers. 
We are all the way down now in Module 4 to Section 4, where I'm going to talk to you briefly about invoicing customers for products and services. This is really very similar to what we just went through, except we won't be pulling any information from an estimate. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and create a real quick invoice to show you how this works. If I want to just create an invoice and not pull from an estimate, I'm just going to start with create invoices right here. And I'm going to pull in a customer and a job. I'm going to go ahead and pull in Tom's sunroom again. And let's just say this is something that has nothing to do with that estimate we created. Now, even if there was an estimate there and it asked us if we wanted to pull from that estimate, we don't have to. We can go ahead and just get out of that window and invoice for anything we like. I'm just going to come down here and we're going to invoice him for some blueprints. We'll just say a quantity of two of these at $500 each. And then that makes $1,000, which is non-taxable. And that's really all I have to do here. You're familiar with everything else here. I'm going to go ahead and add a customer message down at the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and save and close. And I want to make sure this shows up on our reports. If you notice, the open invoices is still here and it says refresh needed. That basically means that when I click there, it's going to go ahead and update the report for me. And you can see now that there are three invoices there for the sunroom. And that's really all there is to actually invoicing when you're not pulling from an estimate. It's not too much different from what we did the first time. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up and let's move over to section five where we're going to talk about receiving customer payments if you're not a subscriber click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload now to get a free quickbooks pro 2020 introductory course click over there and click over there to watch all the videos in this quickbooks pro 2020 playlist